Praise the Lord and welcome to our Sunday service. Thank you so much uh, for joining and thank you so much for being a uh, part of this service. I want to start with very, very good news and uh, I want to start by thanking you so much for your faithfulness in fellowship, for your faithfulness in praying uh, all through this period and time that we have been uh, praying here online. I have good news for you <laughs> as the, uh, the technical team will be showing you a wonderful place is being set up and is being prepared uh, for us by, uh, by God, of course, uh, through you and through your giving. Thank you so much for your partnership. Thank you so much for your continuous uh, sacrifice. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your tithing. Thank you for being faithful, faithful. A covenant practitioners. We have reached a certain level. We still have uh, some way to go, but I can boldly affirm that we shall be opening uh, a date for opening church. Uh, I shall be announced very soon uh, because work is going on, and I know that the name of the Lord is going to be glorified, especially on that grand reopening. So prepare your heart, prepare yourself as a minister, as a, as a member, as, a, as part of us, and, and be excited because of what God is going to be doing in this new phase that is about to begin. And what better month for God to accomplish this uh, but in the month of March, the month of stretching forth. And so we are stretching forth as the photos are showing, as you can see, it is a brand new level, it's a whole new uh, realm that we are you have entered into in the, the name of the Lord be glorified. It is God's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. So our communication will be coming to you uh, through the admin team later on in the week and uh, throughout this month because we believe that uh, early in the month of April we shall be uh, April we shall be, early in the month of April we shall be opening and the name of the Lord is going to continually be uh, magnified. For today, I want to talk about uh, the, I mean, what the Spirit of God has put on my heart, which is the pursuit of the next level, the pursuit of the next level. We are continuing in Isaiah 54, verse number 2, which says that enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy inhabitations. For spare not... Uh, lengthen thy cords for you shall and strengthen thy stakes, for you shall stretch forth on the right hand and on the left, and your seed shall inherit uh, the Gentiles. So we see uh, that scripture that we have uh, we have been looking at this month is a scripture that commands us uh, to enlarge the place of our tent to prepare for expansion, to prepare to break forth. It is a command we received for the month of March that we are going to do it to stretch forth. Remember. We serve a God of advancement. We serve a God of progress. Why do I continually uh, bombard you with messages on next levels, messages on possessing, messages on stretching forth, messages on breaking limits? It's because we serve a God of next levels. We serve a God of next levels. The God we serve, the God we belong to, the Father that we have in heaven, is a father of next levels. He's a God of next levels. He's not the author of stagnation. Let that sink into your heart. Let that sink into your heart that the God you serve, the God you believe in, is a God of change of levels. He's a God who wants to change our levels continually. Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 18 tells us that the path of the just the path of the justified is like a shining light that shines more and more 
unto the perfect day. The path of the just is like a shining light that shines more and more unto a perfect day. That means that your destiny, the path of your destiny, where you're supposed to pass, uh, to pass to get to your destiny, your path, your road, your way, is ordained by God to shine brighter and brighter and brighter until you reach your destiny, until that perfect day. So we serve a God of next levels. We serve a God of advancement. We serve a God of change of levels. He's always interested in moving us forward. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse number 18, he also emphasizes that we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are being changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we see there that God, the God we serve, as we behold him, as we behold his glory, we are being changed into the same image of his glory from one level to another until we become like him. I mean, uh, it, it says we are being changed into the same image from one level of glory to another. When you behold yourself, you are being continually transformed into the image of Jesus Christ in every aspect. But the thing is, you may not look like him right now completely. It's because you're still at a certain level of what? Of glory. But as you continually change, you become more and more like him in every aspect. You become more and more like him in faith. You become more and more like him in character. You become more and more like him in accomplishments. You become more and more like him in every area of your life. So don't uh, be, um, I mean, don't be disappointed because where you are right now seems uh, quite different from who he is and who you know him to be. As long as you continually behold him, you can be sure that you're being changed more and more and more into his image from glory to glory. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse number 6 tells us uh, about the children of Israel, God speaking to them. And he said, the Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, you have dwelt long enough on this mountain. You have dwelt long enough on this mountain. Then he says, turn ye, uh, turn ye and take your journey and go to the Mount of the Amorites. One translation, I think it's, uh, it's uh, NIV. He says, break camp and advance. Break camp and advance. But in Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse number 6, he begins uh, by saying, you have dwelt for so long on this mountain. The Lord our God spoke to us in Horeb saying, you have dwelt long enough in this mountain. These people came to this mountain as a testimony. They came to this mountain as a place, I mean, uh, of, uh, I mean, they arrived there and it looked like they had accomplished something. But after dwelling there for a certain time, they became comfortable and they, they, were, they didn't seem like they had an idea or even, I mean, a desire to move on to where they were supposed to be going. So God comes to them and tells them himself, you have dwelt for so long on this mountain. I don't know which mountain you have been at for a long time, child of God. I don't know which mountain you have been at for a long time, daughter of the Most High. The Spirit of the Lord is saying you have been around that mountain for so long. What is a mountain? It's that exalted thing that you keep moving around, moving around, moving around. Now the Lord is saying you have dwelt upon this mountain for so long. Break camp and advance. Move on. Move on, move on from that mountain. It may have been a testimony when you arrived, but it's time to break camp and advance. It may have been beautiful when you arrived, but you have dwelt there for so long. It's not your destiny. It's not your destiny. Your destiny is much bigger. Your destiny is much higher. Your destiny is much farther. Your destiny is in a much, much more glorious place. That's why he says now, look at where you are and thank God for that place. Thank God for that job. Thank God for that position. Thank God for that, uh, for that level of accomplishment. But there is more that God has for you. And for you to be able to achieve it, you must be able to break camp and do it and advance. You must be able to arise from where you are and know that there is something much more than where you are right now. So Amos chapter 6 
verse number one, what does it tell us? Amos uh, chapter 6, verse number one, it says, One to them that are easy in Zion who trust in the Mount of Samaria. In other words, you're not supposed to be easy. You're not supposed to be content being in the same place. You're not supposed to allow yourself to be, I mean, to be in one place. In one, one verse, I think it's in Micah, it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Mass, Micah chapter 2, verse number 10. So there are places you are in, there are positions you are in, there are levels that you arrived at, and it was a testimony. And everyone celebrated you, and everyone clapped for you. And everyone, I mean, was like, wow, this is it, this is it, this is it, to God be the glory. But God is speaking to you today, you have dwelt around that mountain long enough. Thank God, there's a revelation there. He's not telling them you have been around this valley long enough, no. He says this mountain, meaning it's a beautiful place. It's a mountain top, but there are higher mountains than the mountain you are at. There are higher mountains than the mountains you are at. There are greater accomplishments than your current level of accomplishments. That's why God is telling you, you have been on this mountain long enough. Break camp and advance. Turn ye northward and move forward. Why? Because if you do not move forward, then you are not obeying God. Then you're not going to make to walk in the fullness of what God has for you. There are things that are important. Uh, I noted about four. Uh, four things that are important to note about levels, about levels, particularly uh, the next level. But generally, four things to note about levels. Number one is that levels are spiritual. Levels are spiritual. If you don't take it in the spirit, you cannot manifest it in the natural. Levels are spiritual. It's like you, you see yourself around the same place at the same level of finances. I mean, you, I mean, even when you work extra hard, it always comes to a certain level of, of income. And many of you actually don't know this, but it, it, there's a cycle. You know it. That even when I have stretched and, and sometimes maybe even begged and, and done all that uh, I am supposed to do, when my month is over, I am always flowing in this, uh, in this realm of finances. If I look at my expenses, they always uh, flow in a certain realm. That's a fact of life. Uh, it, there might be a once in a, in a while breakthrough. But when you look at your constant, your monthly, your weekly, uh, and your quarterly, you see you're flowing in a certain level. That is a level. Let me tell you something. Levels are spiritual. Levels are spiritual. It's like your spiritual accomplishments. Your spiritual level determines the things that come to you. It determines the things that you attract. It determines the level at which you live. And let me tell you, if you want to change levels and you don't change them fast in the realm of the spirit, if you don't understand that levels are spiritual, you begin to do things in the natural to change levels only to be pulled back to the same level. That's what's, what is always happening uh, to certain people. As someone uh, uh, you intends to, let me use an example of marriage. You tend to get married. Uh, you don't understand that marriage is spiritual. You don't understand that uh, breaking the siege of marital stagnation is a spiritual matter. So you move in there, you get a beautiful person, you, you earn some money, and then you start on the preparation. Then you, as you're stretching to get into marriage, all of a sudden, a certain force pulls you back through what? Straight back, misunderstanding, all manner of things, and you find yourself always in the same circle. It's like you're moving up, you're about to get there, and then you just come down, and you find yourself uh, at the same level, what? Uh, single. Now, I want to speak to you today. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive grace to change levels spiritually that they may manifest in the natural. Now, when a person has changed levels spiritually, it doesn't matter what the natural says. It is always automatic that things are going to manifest in the what? In the natural. It is the same thing with a job. You may live a certain, want to live a certain level of income, a certain level in your career. But if you have not prepared for it in the spirit, if you have not taken that level in the spirit, if you have not arrested it, if you have not moved in the spirit to possess it, you will be shocked that no matter how much effort you put in the natural, it's like you always come back to the same place. Why? Because levels are what are spiritual. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse number 18 tells us, Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. 
For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what are eternal. So there are those things that are spiritual, things that are unseen. They are eternal. They live, I mean, they exist in eternity. And those are the things that matter. Now, when you capture your level in that realm, there is no devil in the natural that can stop you. But the other thing also you need to understand about the spirituality of levels is that, I mean, when, you have, you, when your spiritual level belongs to a certain level of accomplishment in the natural, in the realm of the spirit, it is known that that's where you belong. Even when you try to break into the other realm, it's like you're a stranger. It's like you're a man without a visa. It's like uh, trying to enter into certain countries that, are, that have restrictions. So you have to understand that you have to break certain levels in the realm of the spirit for you to be able to enter into them in the realm of the natural. Otherwise, you, uh, you end up frustrated, and that is not your portion in the name of Jesus. So one thing to note about levels is that levels are spiritual. They are spiritual. They are so spiritual that a person may have a very good proposal, a very good plan, may even have wonderful connections. But if they have not moved in the realm of the spirit to take a certain level, all the other things they seem to have uh, seem not to profit them anything. Yet another person may not have the connections, may not have the the good project proposal, may not even have a good presentation. But once they have qualified in the realm of the spirit by certain moves and certain actions and certain inactions and certain sacrifices, then they easily walk into that place. And then you wonder, why is it that some people do too much and stay in the same place and others do so little or even nothing and they just find themselves changing levels? No, you think they are doing nothing, but they are engaging spiritually on certain altars. Why? Because levels are spiritual. You need to understand the spirituality of levels if you intend to continually change levels. Because once you understand the spirituality of levels, you always focus first on the things of the spirit. Why we look not uh, at the things which are seen by the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what are eternal. If I examine in the natural that my money always falls within a certain realm, then I know that's my spiritual level. I begin to work on my spiritual level before I intend to change levels in the natural. When I notice in the realm of the spirit, I mean in the natural, that my relationship is at a certain level and I keep on trying. I put in dinners, I put in money, I put in shoes, I put in flowers and it still always uh, vacillates around the same level of quarrels and everything. Then I know that this thing is spiritual. I have not yet possessed this marital glory in the realm of the spirit. What do I need to do? Maybe I need to fast. Maybe I need to pray. Maybe I need to engage the word. Maybe I need to sow a seed in someone whose marriage is perfect. Maybe I need to study more. Maybe I need to learn more. Maybe I need to, uh, to seek for enlightenment in different areas. So you need to understand that levels are spiritual. Once you take a certain level spiritually, let me tell you, in the natural, things begin to fall into place. But if you have not taken the level spiritually, you, do effort, you engage efforts in the natural and you always fall in the same place. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ that your eyes are open to see what you need to do in the realm of the spirit to provoke an instant change of level in Jesus' mighty name. Number two, uh, uh, number two uh, thing that you need to note about uh, levels is that that it takes a serious uprising to change levels. It takes a serious uprising uh, to change levels. Levels change by force. Levels don't change uh, by wishing. Levels don't change because you, you saw it. Levels change by force. You must engage. Micah chapter 2 verse 10 says, arise and depart. You must arise if you want to change levels. You can't change levels seated. You can't change levels sleeping. You can't change levels sleeping as usual. You can't change levels lying down. You must arise. It says, arise ye and depart. You must uh, consciously engage. As someone, one of the uh, most humorous jokes I've ever had, I think I had it uh, while growing up as a Christian, is that the, you cannot slide into prosperity. You, you cannot stumble into prosperity. You, you can't stumble into prosperity. You cannot stumble into success. You can't stumble into greatness. It is a conscious effort. You must cultivate it consciously. You must engage it consciously. You can stumble into failure, but you cannot stumble into, uh, into prosperity. I, I mean, there is a, I, I told you about uh, this joke that uh, I had when, uh, uh, when I was growing up 
that there was this man that was uh, found in a mango tree uh, trying to steal mangoes uh, in their season. And they asked him, how did you get in that tree? And he said, I slid and I fell, uh, and I fell in a tree. And he, he was just arrested. Well, you cannot slide into a tree. You can't. You, you, you do not slide into, into a higher level. You don't stumble into a higher level. You engage consciously. You engage consciously. So there has to be a serious uprising for you to be able to change you have to change levels. It's so people that think, oh, let me just lie down here when God wishes my levels will change. Oh, let me just be patient when, when my turn comes, someone will come and beak on me. No way. Levels, are, no one, I mean, it's only God that beacons you, but you will find more opposition than support. You must have a serious attitude uh, where you have already arisen from the inside. And you know exactly uh, that your levels must change. Number three uh, thing to note about levels is that there is no red carpet <laughs> to the next level. There is no red carpet to the next level. There is no red carpet to the next level. Many of you are used to invitations that are followed by ushers uh, to welcome you and to love you as you enter the next level. There is no red carpet to the next level. You must force your way there. Philippians chapter 3, verse number 13. Uh, there is, uh, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting the things which are behind me and reaching forth the things which are before. Verse 14, I press. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I press. That is how you enter into new levels. You force your way there. In fact, there are many, sad, uh, there are many angry faces on the next level that you desire to go to. There are many opposing giants. There are many things that will challenge you. Who do you think you are? Who invited you here? Who told you to come? But I want to tell you, levels, you, you, you do not wait for a red carpet to be laid for you to ascend. You don't wait for, I mean, for flowers to be put on your path to get there. No, you ascend by force. You force your way there from the time of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. You must be a forceful person if you're going to be continually changing levels. Matthew eleven twelve. in from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent taketh it by what? By force. You must be a forceful person for you to continually change levels. When it comes to promotion, you must be forceful. When it comes to to advancement, you must be forceful. When it comes to growth, you must be forceful. When it comes to expansion, you must be forceful. If you wait for a red carpet to be put down for you to change levels, if you wait for everyone to smile for you to change levels, you'll be waiting for so long. You must engage. If you're waiting for someone's amen to change levels, you'll be waiting for so long. Listen, the amens will be there. The smiling faces will be there. But I also want to tell you, and I also want to warn you, there will be some sad faces. There will be some scary faces. There will be some discouraged people. There will be some people that feel like it's too much. There will be some people that feel like, oh, yeah, uh, uh, let me see if you get there. I'll find you there. Yes, you must be willing to blaze the trail. You must be willing to chart, uh, to chart a new course. You must be willing to, to break barriers. You must be willing to find a new path where there has not been a path. Why? Because that's who you are. You are a pathfinder, you are a trailblazer, you are a pace setter, you are one that will go where no one has ever gone. You are the one that goes into the wilderness and turns it into a pool. You are the one that goes to dilapidated places and turn them into theaters and beautiful places. Why? Because that's who you are. According to the covenant, you shall rebuild the waste cities. Uh, the, the, I mean, you shall rebuild the waste cities. You shall raise the broken foundations of desolate places. You shall establish that which had been abandoned. Why? Because because that is who you are, a trailblazer, a pathfinder, restorer of the breach, restorer of the broken one, foundations. Are you listening, somebody? So there is no red carpet to your next level. You must force your way there. You must enter in by force. You must provoke your way. You, you, <laughs> you, you must become a, the kind of person that says, all I know is this is where I belong and I'm coming in Jesus' mighty name. Philippians chapter 3, verse 
14 says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Number four, the uh, thing you need to note about next levels is that you have an invitation from God for your next level. There is an invitation from God. There is always an invitation from God for the next level. God is always inviting you to a higher level. Revelation chapter 4, verse number 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up here, and I will show you things which must be here after. Come up here. God is speaking to you. Come up here in your business. Come up here in your career. Come up here in your finances. Come up here in your live in your in your in your consecration. Come up here in your prayer life. Come up here in your in your relationships. Come up here in every aspect of your life. There is always an invitation from God to come up here. There is always a next level invitation from God. Some of you are like, oh, how come I don't hear God? I think I am waiting to hear God. If, if, uh, if he needs me to change this job, then God will speak to me. Let me tell you, God is not the author of stagnation. If you find yourself living below uh, your, 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 your minimum uh, requirements, if you find yourself not fulfilling destiny the way you want, if you find yourself not being able to do what you want to do with your finances, know that God is calling you to a higher level of living. You don't need an angel to appear to you. You don't need a, a, a loud voice to, to come to you in the middle of the night. No, your needs speak to you. Your desires speak to you. You desire something, you cannot have it. It shows that God is beckoning you higher because the desire you have for good and great things is put in you by God. So if you find yourself just by your life that you're not able to accomplish all that you want to do, then you know that God is calling you higher. There is always a next level invitation from God. It doesn't matter how beautiful it appears. I mean, the level where you are appears, there is always a next level invitation from God. God is always beckoning you higher. He's always calling you to come up here in Jesus' mighty name. So what is the goal of this apostolic commission? What is the goal of any apostolic commission in the life of those that are connected? Now, in this aspect, I'm speaking to you concerning my goal. What is my goal as far as your life is concerned? What's my responsibility? What am I supposed to do as a servant of God? What do I owe you? What does your church owe you? What does your ministry owe you? What does your uh, your man of God or you. What is it that your man of God is supposed to do for you? Number one, he is supposed to usher you into your destiny. He's supposed to usher you into your destiny. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 19. Uh, Jesus speaking to Peter, he said, And he said unto them, uh, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. God, did, Jesus was going to say, Follow me, and you will become. He says, I will make you. So the goal of any apostolic mission, ministry, any apostolic commission, any ministry, that you're connected to, its number one goal is to usher you into your destiny. It is to bring you into the fulfillment of, your, of God's purpose for your life. It is to bring you into a greater manifestation of that which God has called you to do. It is not to turn you into something that they are, something that you're not meant to be. No, it is to identify your calling, to identify your destiny, to identify your, 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 your God or de destiny. And then we usher you there. We bring you there. Many people have come to me at certain levels and they are at a whole, at totally different levels right now because I understand my responsibility towards people. I've never been the kind that will be content with people who love the comfort zone. Anyone that comes around me, is going to be provoked to believe more, to believe more, to do more, to stretch more, to, 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 to stand up. I remember someone asking me for advice and I asked them, do you want me to speak to you as a friend or as your pastor? If I speak to you as a friend, there's advice I give you. When I speak to you as your pastor, be ready to be stretched, be ready to be, to be enlarged, be ready to be challenged. Why? 
because that's my responsibility to provoke that God-like faith in the inside of you to reach for more, to go further, to go higher, to stretch more, and to become all that God has called you to be. So the goal of uh, your ministry, the goal of this ministry, the goal of any ministry that you're connected to must be to usher you into your destiny, number one. Number two, it is to establish you into that destiny. It is one thing to come into something. It's another thing to be established in that thing. It is one thing to come into something. It is possible for you to get into a job, a big job, but then you leave struggling to settle in that job. You leave being oppressed, being tormented, being harassed, and that is not God's desire. And that's not God's ideal. That's not God's plan for for you. Yes, I usher you. I usher you by the grace of God into this greatness. Now, the other aim is to establish you, see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that you might be established. This is Paul speaking uh, to the Romans. He says, I long to see you as an apostle, that I may impart to you a certain spiritual gift, some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established. So the goal of any ministry is to establish the people that belong to that ministry. Number one, it is to bring them into their destiny. Number two, it is to establish them in that destiny so that they may settle in their destiny and begin to do express. Number three, a goal of any ministry, it is to preserve your calling as a child of God. It is to preserve your calling, to ensure that you stay online while you are achieving destiny. Because very many people, while pursuing destiny, have found themselves uh, moving now into destruction because they start uh, beginning to pursue uh, destiny at every cost, even at the cost of their conscience, at the cost of their salvation. But the goal of, of the ministry is to ensure that your life is preserved, your salvation is preserved, while you are pursuing destiny. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse number 2. He said, for I'm jealous over you with godly jealous, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. In other words, Paul is saying that he has a responsibility to produce these Christians uh, from Corinth to Christ as virgins, and he must present them uh, faultless. Why? That's his responsibility. That's his goal. That's his mission. Because if you achieve, if a ministry uh, helps you to achieve destiny, achieve greatness at the expense of your soul, then that ministry has failed you and it has failed in its assignment. If it is at the expense, in other words, you're supposed to achieve greatness but not end up a thief. That is my goal, that you can achieve greatness and not be a thief. You can achieve uh, uh, greatness and happiness and not be, uh, I mean, and not be a, 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 west, a, a wasted project. That you may not end up in hell while, to, uh, while trying to achieve prosperity. That you may be prosperous and still make heaven in a grand style. Are you listening, Sam? That's the goal of the ministry. Anyone can be, I mean, anyone can emerge great. Anyone can be prosperous. Anyone can emerge rich in this world using worldly means. But what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, the scriptures say. So at the goal of a ministry, the difference between me and any other person, any other coach, any other success coach, any other uh, a person that will teach you or, or bring you into greatness, maybe even witches, the difference between me and them is because I, I don't want you to achieve destiny at the expense of your soul. I don't want you to achieve greatness at the expense of your life. I don't want you to achieve uh, a greatness at the expense of heaven. I don't want you to be rich and miss heaven. No, you can have both. You can be very rich, exceedingly rich, and still make heaven in a grand style. You can be exceedingly successful and still make heaven. Those are, those are the principles we churn out. That's the grace we release, and that's the difference we are as far as the equation of success is concerned. Many things can give you success at the expense of your soul, I repeat. But our goal, the goal of the ministry, the goal of the church of Jesus Christ is to give people access to these things and still preserve their destinies as far as heaven is concerned and as far as their commitment to God is concerned. They are concerned. That's the difference. Are you listening, somebody? And number four, it is to carry you into greatness. It is to lead 
literally carry you into greatness. Every apostolic commission is like a it's like an ego. It's like an ego. It's like you just have to, to, to hook yourself to the wings of that ego. And wherever the ego goes, you go. Wherever the ego goes, you go. Even I, as a, I mean, as an apostolic commission, I have bigger egos that I'm hooked to. That wherever they go, I am bound to go. I see their success and that's my success. I see their new levels and those are my new levels. I see their change of levels and I hook myself onto them. Why? Because life, that is how life is programmed to be. The goal of any ministry is to carry you into greatness. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 10, it tells us, As sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things as poor yet making many rich as poor yet making many rich this is Paul speaking about himself and other apostles that they were actually literally making people rich literally making people rich that is the goal of any ministry to make people rich to make people prosperous to make people uh, I mean successful and like I insisted at the beginning not at the expense of their soul, no. Why preserving their souls? Why preserving their lives? Why preserve? So me as a pastor, me as a man of God, when I look at you prospering, I'm not only interested in your prosperity, I'm interested in how you are prospering. I'm not only in pros uh, interested in how many cars you have in your yard, I'm interested in how you are getting them. I'm interested in whether you're not actually stealing to get them, whether you're not getting your life in trouble to get them. That is a big concern as far as I'm concerned. And many of you may not like it, many of you feel like, oh, you're like we are overstepping our boundaries, like maybe you're, you're moving in too fast. I know how to keep this. I'm a big boy. I'm a big woman. I am telling you, <laughs> I am interested not only in your success, but also in, your, in, your, in the preservation of your life as far as destiny is concerned. That's why the principles that we churn out are able to help you achieve destiny and still stay on course and still enjoy a good conscience in the name of Jesus. I love that scripture as poor, yet making many rich. It's my God. I know very many people. I met them at a certain level, and right now they multiplied, I mean, uh, thousands of times. And they, they look back and they wonder, why did I be, why did I think that small? How come I never thought this big? How come I never, I never actually envisioned this kind of success? Why? Because when you come in contact with this grace, this grace catapults you into a greater, greater, greater way of perception greater way of thinking, greater way of conceptualizing, greater way of, of, of I mean, why? Because the grace that is there is to make you rich. It is make you prosper. It is to make you successful while preserving your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, you must understand this, that you must connect fully with the grace of the ministry that you're, you're connected with or that you're part of for you to be able to continually change levels as that, mini, as that ministry is changing levels. Now, lastly, as I finish, how do you maximize your season of lifting, especially when the ministry you're part of is changing levels? How do you also maximize the season of lifting? How do you maximize the season of change of levels? It is possible for you to see what we are doing and be like, wow, Apostle is prosperous. Wow, I think Apostle has some rich people. Wow, we thank God. Wow, we are going to a new place. And still not know how can I maximize this season of lifting? How can you maximize a season of lifting in the ministry where you're part of? Why? Because whenever you're part of a ministry and that ministry is being lifted, it is a very, very sensitive season. So the first thing to do is to be spiritually sensitive. To be spiritually sensitive. To be spiritually sensitive. First Chronicles chapter 13, I mean chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 talks of the sons of Issachar which were men that had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. The heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were their commandment. The children of Issachar who had understanding of the times. You must be spiritually sensitive. You must ask God. God, levels are changing in the ministry that I'm part of. Position me also for a change of level. Those are the kind of prayers you pray in this kind of season. 
Position me for a change of level. Position me for a change of level. Help me to be in the right place at the right time. To encounter the right people. Help me to, be, to do the right thing at the right time. It's, it's important for you to be spiritually sensitive, especially in this season. It is important to be spiritually sensitive. Because what you have to, to know is that levels, uh, change of levels is like waves. Uh, like you would see waves uh, if you have been to the ocean, if you have been to the sea, if you have been to the lake. The lake, you may not see the waves uh, very well. But if you have been to the seas, uh, to the oceans, there you can see waves. When a wave is coming, it is coming. And when it's gone, it is gone. You may still get to where you want to go, but if you want to ride the wave, you must be able to time it properly. You must be sensitive. You must be sensitive. So there are waves. There's a wave of change of level that has landed. Now, it is important for you to position yourself spiritually, to pray for spiritual positioning, to ask God to position you spiritually so that you will not be found in the wrong place. It is important for you to know when levels are changing, <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there, there, there are also temptations, there are challenges. The enemy uh, wants you to, to, to stay behind and you must be able to say, no, I am not missing this wave. I'm not, I'm not missing this wave. I'm not missing timing. I'm not waking up late. I am alert. I am sensitive. I am positioned and I am part of this change and this move in Jesus' mighty name. Position yourself. You may, have been, uh, you may have given up on your department. You may have given up on service. You may even be now sipping some things you never used to sip before lockdown, drinking some things, smoking some things. Now it's time for you to put them down and understand a wave has come. It's a wave of shift. It's a change of level. Position yourself. Be spiritually sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You may, have, uh, you may be staying in places you're not supposed to be staying in, with people you're not supposed to be staying in, because all those things happened during the lockdown. Now it's time to be spiritually sensitive and to know that it is a takeoff time. When a plane is taking off, there are things that you don't do, and there are things that you, don't, you are supposed to do. I mean, your, your seat belt must be tightened. Your, your, I mean, your, 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 your chair must be in an upright position. There, there are certain things. They will tell you, your phones must be switched off. Why? And when, when the plane is already up there in the air, now they tell you, okay, you can now turn off your seat belt. You can go to the washroom. You can, um, you can actually uh, put your chair in a sleeping position. Why? Because now you're mid-air, you're up there. But when it's takeoff time, there is certain things you must do. Tighten your seatbelt. Put your chair in an upright position. No moving to the bathroom. No moving in the corridors. No have, Why? Because it's takeoff time. Takeoff time, there's turbulence. There's resistance. There is gravity. There's all manner of things. So you need to be as light as possible. This is the time for you to fast. This is the time for you to pray. For positioning this month, the remaining part of this month, the, the start of the other month, it is time for you to be spiritually sensitive. If your prayer life had rusted uh, and you have not been uh, active on the prayer altar, it's time to get back. Hallelujah. So that when we get to church, we don't say praise the Lord and you say yo, uh, are you. And then you, you actually don't even know how to respond because of the kind of uh, environment that you are in right now. Begin, <laughs> begin to prepare yourself. <laughs> so that when we meet, it's, it will not be evident the kind of life you have been living in Jesus' mighty name. Be spiritually sensitive. Even in your giving, be spiritually sensitive because you see, you may actually have your crumb work. This is what I do at the end of every month. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is how I was taught. But be spiritually sensitive. Forget about uh, what you read and what you, you had. Be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. God, how can I be part of this move? What? I, you don't have to be called upon. No, you are a living creature. You are a living a Christian in a living relationship with the living God. Position yourself in your altar and ask the Spirit of God, how can I be part of this move? How can I maximize this season? How can I be part of this, uh, uh, this movement? How can I be part of this change of level? Position me. Why? Because if there must be a willing heart, it is acceptable based on what you have, not what you don't have. If, if, if what you have to give 
It has to be within you, and it has to be within your means. It may be a stretch, but it is still within your means. A sacrifice is something you have. You have it. You, it can't be a sacrifice if you don't have it. If you have it, it's a sacrifice. So be spiritually sensitive. Be spiritually uh, sensitive. And number, number two, uh, number two uh, maximizing uh, the season of lifting. Number two, be a person of action. Be a person of action. First Samuel chapter 2, verse number 3, it says, Talk no more ex so exceeding uh, proudly. Let not arrogance come out of your mouth. For the Lord God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are what? Are weighed. Actions are weighed. God is a God of knowledge. And by him, actions are weighed. Many of you go in the, in the closet and you seek God for sensitivity and for direction, and God tells you, actually, God speaks to you. As soon as you step out, you fail to take action. Why? Because you get comfortable with what was revealed to you, but you don't follow through to action. Listen, he that hears the words of mine, Jesus said, and does not do them, are likened unto a foolish man who built his house on sand. The winds came and they blew, and the house fell, and great was the fall of it. But he says... He that hears my words and does them, I will liken unto a wise man who built on a rock. And the winds came, and the winds blew, and the house stood firm because it was established on a rock. It is hard to build on a rock, and that is how it is to be a person of action. A person that hears in the realm of the Spirit and puts into action what you have heard. Be a man of action. Don't be a man of words. <laughs> the, 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 I mean, Ugandans are very interesting. I saw someone who had a birthday and he said, God, on my birthday, deliver me from this uh, may use that people who come to you saying, may you be this, may you be that. And I was like, wow. So people are tired even of, of, of just being blessed. Uh, <laughs> may you prosper. They want, they want tangible things. Be a person of action. But of course, those people are ignorant because words are, are, are solid. Words are matter. Words are, are powerful. Words can materialize into things. But don't just be a person of words. Be a person of action. Move and do something in the change of level. Call the numbers uh, on the screen and ask, how can I be part? How can I, how can I be part? How can I be involved? How can I be a part of this mission? I mean, for me, this is, this is my life. Every time I see things happening somewhere and things that are good, things that are commendable, things that are glorious, I want to know how can I be part of this kind of move. Why? Because I know whatever you make happen for God, for God's work, God will make happen in your own life. If you mind God's business, God minds your business in Jesus' mighty name. That shall be your portion in Jesus' name. So be spiritually sensitive. Be a person of action. Be a person of action. Move and take action. Daring acts, daring feats, daring actions in the name of Jesus. And number three and the last one is understand the benefit of pain in change of levels. Understand the benefit of pain in change of levels. David speaking to a certain, uh, uh, a certain, uh, I mean, to certain leaders of Israel, he, uh, I mean, uh, and a certain man who wanted to give him a certain field for free that he may offer sacrifice, he said, I will not offer unto my God something that cost me nothing. I will not offer to God a sacrifice that cost me nothing. If it doesn't move you, if it doesn't shake you, if it doesn't pain you. <laughs> if, it does, if it has no element of pain, it is not a sacrifice. A sacrifice has an element of pain. Sacrifice has an element of tears. He said, I will not offer unto the Lord burnt offerings unto the Lord my God, of which did cost me nothing. Second Samuel chapter 24, verse 24. He said, and the king said unto Arauna, Nay, but I will surely buy it of thee at a price. Neither will I offer burnt offerings unto the Lord my God of that which doth cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. Listen, this is a principle in the realm of the spirit. If it doesn't squeeze you, if it doesn't, if it doesn't stretch you, if it doesn't pain you, if it doesn't, if there's no element of pain, it's not a sacrifice. 
Many people come with the with sacrifices of um, of, uh, of, of of fifty thousand. Listen, for someone, fifty thousand may actually be an exceedingly great sacrifice. For someone like I told, like me, who had uh, at one time stayed in a house of forty thousand, and I struggled to pay that money. At that time, fifty thousand was a sacrifice. I remember one time in my church, the church I was praying uh, in, in at that time. Uh, there was a call for, uh, for, for a sacrifice, and I went forward for 50,000. When I brought it, I believed that heaven, earth, and hell, and all the angels must have stood at a tease, uh, attention to witness me give 50,000, because that was, I mean, <laughs> that was something out of this world. That is the rent, that is everything, that is life, that is, that is ox it's somewhere close to oxygen. At that time, it was a sacrifice. But now, if I call 50,000 a sacrifice, God will knock me in the head. Why? Because he, know, he knows I know better than that. It must, there has to be an, a stretch, there has to be pay. There has to be something that lets go. There has to be a feeling that you feel that I am uh, actually, this is a what? This is a sacrifice. Psalms 126 verse 5 describes a sacrifice in a good way. It says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Verse 6 says, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bearing with sheaves with him. Listen to this. Understand, maximizing the season be, of lifting. Be sensitive. Be spiritually sensitive. Be spiritually sensitive. Why am I saying spiritually sensitive? Because some of you think, God, maybe all you can give is money. No, there is a lot more that you can offer in this season of shifting, in this season of lifting. There is a lot more. You need to be spiritually sensitive, spiritually alert. Your skill, your knowledge, your connection, your availability, your time, it all can amount to a sacrifice as long as it is offered with understanding. Are you listening, somebody? So be spiritually sensitive in the season of lifting. Your service, your availability can be a sacrifice. There's a time when all I had to offer was myself. I said, God, I'm here. Use me. If they need anything, I am available. That can be your sacrifice. Listen to this child of God. Be spiritually sensitive. Number two, be a man, a woman of action. Be a man and woman of action. Don't be a procrastinating kind of Christian who is always waiting and wishing. Let me first see what the other one will do. Let me first see what the other one will do. I think so and so might. So, no, be a person of action. Take responsibility for your own change of level by being a man and a woman of action. And lastly but not least, understand the benefit of pain. Understand the benefit of pain. When it feels painful, there you are growing. I understand also this from the gym. I have understand this from my coach, my, my fitness coach, that at that moment that most people feel pain in their muscles and they give up, that's the time when their muscles are stretching. That's, when the, that's the time when the muscle is stretching. At that time when you feel intense pain in your muscle, you may be doing burpees, you may be doing, you may be doing jumping jacks, you may be doing sit-ups, you may be doing whatever uh, motions or, or, or your body. Whenever you feel the pain, that is the point of growth. As long as there's no pain, there's no growth. As long as there's no pain you're feeling, you're not working out. If you want to be sure that you're working out, look out for the pain and stretch your th yourself in the realm of pain. Stretch yourself in the realm of pain, then you can be sure to grow. That is a spiritual principle. Don't stay in the comfort zone as far as kingdom service is concerned. Service that you offer without sacrifice is, I mean, is a ritual. It's a ritual. Service, worship without sacrifice is ritual. The, even your kingdom service, there has to be an element of sacrifice for you to generate uh, rewards and attention of heaven. If you're only available uh, out of convenience, if you only serve when it's so convenient, you will never actually tap into certain levels, uh, I mean certain change of levels. You must embrace the element of pain, the element of sacrifice for you to maximize change of position in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for being part of the service. Let the Techno team continue to flash those pictures, to flash those impressions, to flash those uh, the, the new level where we are going. It is a time, this is the moment God is with us.
and there is absolutely nothing that is impossible with him. Don't underestimate your seed. Don't underestimate your sacrifice. Don't underestimate your giving. If it is from your heart, it is acceptable unto God, and it is a big contributor to the change of levels, and your own change of level is coming in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you so much for following through. Thank you so much for being part of the service. If you're not born again, pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, come before you, accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I am born again in Jesus' name. And also I encourage you to go ahead and be faithful kingdom practitioners, covenant practitioners. Go ahead and give your tithe and your offerings, your sacrifice. Go ahead and stretch. Go ahead and indicate that I'm part of this move. I'm part of this change of level. Like I insist, nothing too small, nothing too big. Make sure it's from your heart. The Lord accepts it, and you are blessed immensely in Jesus' mighty name. I release a blessing upon you. Grace to change levels with us. Grace to take hold of your next level and possess it in the name of Jesus Christ. You shall not be left behind. This is your moment. This is your season. I can't wait to see you in person. It's going to be glorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Prepare yourselves, everybody. The new level is here. The new phase has arrived. The glory of God is going to descend. And the glory is going to be manifested. You are part of this move. You cannot be eliminated. They said you can't be left behind. You are part of it. God has you in plan. He has you in mind. All things are prepared for you. Be ready. Be prepared. This is your season of change of position in Jesus' name. Straight forth and manifest greatness in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for being part of the service. Thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your love, for your continuous commitment throughout this season in Jesus' mighty name. I love you. i see you on Wednesday at 3, I mean at 7 uh, p.m. Uh, those of you that are coming for the meeting here at Mount Zion Studios at 2 p.m., uh, make sure to hurry up. If you want to be part of that meeting and you feel like there's still time, get on, a, I mean, get your car, get whatever movement you have and get to um, uh, Nobu Hotel in Tinder or in Tinder, uh, share in Tinder, give us a call on those numbers 0773-322-281, and we shall direct you accordingly. But communication will be coming to you. Michael and the team will be getting in touch with you. The Lord Richard bless you. Be part of this move. And the Lord continues to bless you in the name of Jesus. As you give, the numbers are 773-322-281-0754-322-281. Checks are written to Amazing Grace Faith Ministries. And you call those numbers and be helped accordingly. And if you want to make transfers, also you call those numbers and we shall help you accordingly. God bless you. I love you. And I can't wait to see you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Spirit.